But I've got a little project here, which is ideal for the old Sherline mill. Basically, this is the carriage stop for my Walco lathe. Now, this was not designed for the Walco. This is something I bought very early on when I got the lathe. This is, I think, an actual. I think this is actually a Draper uh, carriage stop. But this part, the top part, happens to fit this pit bit here. This fits very well on the Walco way. Now, the only problem with this is that it's not really deep enough. So when it when it's when it's actually clamped, it comes down to about like there. So there's it's, there's this gap between. The, um, the two parts, which is too big, and I have to put a spacer in. And this has been annoying me ever since I've uh, had this thing. So I thought, well, all we need to do is make the bottom clamp slightly larger. So we just need to make this, but with slightly uh, larger larger depth here in this in in, the, in this piece, so that this this piece here is higher, basically. And here's our bit of scrap aluminium that we're going to use. So we're going to go on over to the Sherline and have a go at making one. Okay, so there's a setup. I'm going to square up, start up by squaring off the block. Uh, it's, it's pretty square that way. So this doesn't, this is, I'm not making parts for a jet engine turbine here. So this doesn't have to be majorly accurate, but I would like it to be reasonably square. So we'll push off. I think it's uh, widest at that at that far end but we'll go all the way across the face just in case yeah it's clear all the way back at about uh, 2,150 RPM, which is about right. And then in there. Yeah, looking good for that face. That's uh, very nice indeed. I'll have a quick look in that. Lock that up. There go. Yeah, that's come out fine. Now I'll flip it over and we'll do the other side.
think one more pass should clean it up nicely. like it's uh, squared up. I might put it in and do the other two sides but I'll do that off camera because you, you've seen enough of this. Right now we're ready to cut the step. Now I've marked it out uh, using poor man's marking out blue i.e blue sharpie and what we're going to do now is we're going to bake make this part and that's the step. So that will is going to end up looking like that hopefully only it will be of course the measurement this this piece this face here will be deeper. That's the idea anyway. So we'll start off by uh, touching off. Let's come back out again a bit. Right. There we go. Check the speed. Wind on some cut. And away we go. I'll come back when I'm nearer finishing it. Right, we're nearly there. So zoom in a little bit. Yeah, got to probably another one, maybe two passes and we'll be done. One more. Right, we're there. Come have a look at that. Now, I've still got to, to drill a hole in it and tap it 6mm for the stud that goes through and does the clamping and then it will have to be uh, cut off and that will have to be cleaned up. That's the next couple of operations to do. Now I've uh, clamped the two parts together, the original top part and my new bottom part and I used a transfer punch to mark the position of the hole. I've now swapped out the 10mm end mill for a center drill. I'm going to center drill the hole first and then we'll go through with a 5mm twist drill which will be the tapping size for 6mm. So here we go.
Well, this isn't an ideal setup for drilling, but I've got some support under here to, to, to support this edge and it is clamped quite firmly here and it's on the, on the parallel. So hopefully that will be rigid enough. I've eyeballed the hole, so we'll give it a go. Now here's an easy way to tap straight holes. Use your drill press. Don't use it under power. I never do power tapping. I learned my lesson with power tapping years ago. I do not do it. But you can start the, the, the tapping process off manually using the drill. And that way you will definitely get a straight tapped hole. So basically all you do is push it down and then you just start it off manually like this. Go in a few threads, not far. You don't have to go in that far, really. You know, it's started, it's nice and straight. Take your chuck key, loosen off the chuck, go and get your tap wrench. Right, well, that's the bit of work so far. Um, we don't need this piece at the back, that's surplus. So I'm, I'm, I could mill it off, but it's just easier to chop the bulk of it off using the bandsaw, and then we'll finish it off on the mill, basically. Right, the finishing, the finishing part now. Quite a wonky cut on the old bandsaw there. Okay, last pass. Yeah, I think we're done. Excellent. Well, here's a finished item. Um, there's the original, 
obviously this is the one we just made and basically you can see that see what the the, the, the difference is it's it's ba it's noticeably this depth here this is much deeper and that allows there to be a much smaller gap between uh, this part when it's clamped on then there was a huge gap between there was a huge gap between this part sort of something like that whereas with this one the gap is just enough to give you some clamping but not not too much so yeah something i should have done ages ago and um <laughs> i only finally got around to doing it now note to self though on this one um it would be really useful on the shirt line to have some little tiny machinist jacks the smallest one I've got is, is just too big to, to use on that, but I need to make up some small ones and that would be that would be very useful for certain drilling and milling configurations. Anyway, there you go, that's it. Mod modification and upgrade to the Warco WM180 carriage stop to uh, uh, basically uh, make it work properly. <laughs> anyway, just a quick little milling video. Hope you uh, enjoyed that. A little bit of action on the Sherline for a change. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.